Hi everyone, um, I'm Amelia, uh, I work with FCOM um, and today we're doing the first of our big Skillshare sessions um, and so this initiative was sort of born out of a, a reflection on the need for community um, and something that I think COVID-19 has taught us as we've seen a lot of uh, mutual aid groups spring up. Um, let me just add. Um, so we're very lucky today we're going to be joined by the wonderful uh, Richard Holman who is going to be uh, kicking off our sessions on creative inspiration. Uh, hi Richard, how are you? Hey Amelia, yeah very well thanks, how are you doing? Yeah good thank you. Um, yeah so uh, just a little bit about you to welcome you to the, to the uh, session. Um, Richard comes from a background in advertising and design for many of the world's leading entertainment brands and now devotes himself to uh, helping others have better ideas which is what he's here to, to share his wisdom on today. Um, and he, he also runs workshops. He's actually got some coming up this month and you can find some links to that on our website. I'll post them uh, with the recording of this video afterwards. Um, and he writes articles and books, speaks at events and on podcasts. Um, so yeah, welcome. Thank you very much for being here. Um... Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> this is my first, um, first ever Instagram live. Uh, it's so... only my second, so <laughs> we're in this Fingers together. Fingers crossed, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, you're, I know you're going to share with us today some of your, your three top tips for great ideas. Um, and yeah. I'm very excited to hear what they are. Are you, ready? are you ready to give us tip number one? I'm all set to give you tip number one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, it's very nice to, uh, to be here. So I've got three tips today. Um, and my first tip on the, to help you in the hunt for great ideas is not to evaluate too soon. So I think a really common mistake people make is that they have an idea and that they immediately jump to evaluation to try and work out whether that idea is good or bad. And if you do that, you arrest the creative process. You stop your ideas even before they've really begun. And the trick is to try and carve out enough time in your in the thinking, the idea part of your creative process, to just get into creative flow. So there, there's a quite a famous study that Harvard Business School have done a number of times, and they take a, a room full of creative professionals and they give them a brief. And they say to one half of the room, you are gonna be rewarded for the quantity of your ideas. So it doesn't matter if your ideas are any good, but just come up with as many as you can. And then they say to the other side of the room, you're going to be rewarded for the quality of your ideas. So we don't need many ideas at all, but just make sure they're really good. And what always happens every time they repeat this study is that the side of the room that had been asked to come up with as many as possible and not worry about quality always has the best ideas. So I think the, um, the trick is when you're working, is to avoid that temptation as soon as you've had an idea to try and think, is that good or bad? And to just keep on going, you know, to, to get your pencil out and just not stop until you've, you've filled a page. So that, that, that would be my first tip. There's a brilliant, um, a brilliant artist who was a nun, uh, Karita Kent, who some, some people watching may have heard of. And she's a hugely inspirational person to me. Um, and she, she began as a nun, but then got very good at art. And the, um, the Roman Catholic Church kicked her out because her, her fame as an artist was um, surpassing her fame as a nun. And she had, um, one of the best things about her was she wrote this sort of manifesto, which she called her art department rules. Now, I know these will probably come out backwards on um, Instagram Live, uh, but uh, rule number eight is don't try to create and analyze at the same time their different processes. So that's my tip number one. That is a fantastic tip. Um, yeah, and, and clearly one that across the ages has been uh, <laughs> resonating. Um, and, and can you give us an example of sort of how you might put that into practice when, you know, when you're actually doing it? Um, yeah, how would you... Yeah, um, so um, I would... W one thing you can do is just divide the time you have between when you get the brief to mm -hmm. when you need to propose a solution into two. And you say, for the first half, of this time, however long that time may be, whether it's two months, two weeks, or just two hours, I'm not gonna worry about the outcome at all. I'm just gonna relax and let myself explore the problem and completely take the heat off. And then halfway through the process, or two thirds if you're feeling confident, that's when you flip and you go, right, okay, I'm gonna look at everything I've got and I'm gonna be ruthless now. So begin carefree and ruthless. 
Sounds quite freeing in a way. <laughs> I think it is because, um, you know, the, the, the enemies of creativity are fear and okay. pressure and self-doubt. And, and actually, the create, we, we, we're beginning to understand more about how our brains work. And the rational part of our brain, the evaluative part, is in the prefrontal cortex. But creativity happens elsewhere. You know? mm -hmm. So it's kind of two different mental processes. So that would be my first tip. Fantastic. What's your second? My second tip, I will just look down my notes here, stuck to the radiator, <laughs> um, it is, to, um, is to begin with the worst idea. So this, this kind of follows on from the vibe of, of what I was saying before. But um, when particularly in a commercial context, you know, when you when you work for an agency or something, there's a lot of pressure on you to come up with a great idea. We all want to have a great idea, a, a, you know, an award winning idea that's going to be hugely effective. And that creates pressure and pressure is no good for creativity. So a really nice trick can be to say, right, I'm going to ask myself, what is the worst possible idea I can come up with for this brief? What's the absolute most shit solution <laughs> and that is a really freeing thing to do because it immediately makes you laugh you know it's quite good in a brainstorm situation it's quite funny and daft and so it relaxes you and then the, the second thing that's quite interesting is it can cast you off into an unexpected direction you know because you'll, you'll go where the worst idea is and nobody else would go there and and, that, and what i've often found is that if you if you start with that you can actually find in your terrible idea the sort of the dna of something really exciting and original so so begin with with the worst idea would be um would be my tip fantastic yeah i really like that um and could you give an, us an example of, of when when that might have been done to with great success <laughs> or not yeah well um th there are there are quite a few examples but one of my favorite was um there was a an american advertising team uh, whose names were um, John Noble and Roy Grace, I think. And they worked on the Volkswagen account in the 60s. And they used this technique. They were, they'd worked on this account for a long time. And they were kind of bored of making the same old commercials. So they said, what's the worst possible scenario we can come up with for selling a car? And they came up with a funeral. Uh, they thought, nobody's going to put, a, nobody's going to sell a car with a funeral and so they smashed these two two things together and as often happens when you smash two contradictory things together you get a really fresh approach so after this um, video if you if you look up um roy grace john noble vw ad 1966 funeral some of those terms people will be able to take a look at it for themselves i will definitely check that out thank you um yeah such a fun wonderful idea to bring together two things you would never expect and as you say it takes you in a direction a usual process might might never go yeah it's, it's really good as i say as well when you when you're uh, working on an idea with somebody else you know mm -hmm. uh, a good, good sort of brainstorm technique nice great thank you all right we're on to our, our final tip of, of the of the session <laughs> uh, yes sure so uh, my final tip is is maybe the most controversial of the three which is um steel <laughs> but don't be a cannibal it's got a coda to that so um yeah this 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 sort of idea of stealing and theft comes up a, a lot in in um, when we think about the creative process uh, picasso most famously said good artists copy great artists steal and i think the thing about that statement is that if you copy something you imitate it and you end up with just the sort of pale facsimile of the original idea or concept or object but if you steal something that literally means you take it and make it your own so i i think there's a good way to steal and a bad way to steal and the way you work out which you're doing is to think about whether you've stolen something from a category that isn't your own from outside your own genre and that's the trick, because if you steal ideas from within your own genre, that to me is a kind of cannibalism, you know, mm -hmm. and um, cannibalism never ends well. Um, <laughs> but there are countless instances of some of our most original thinkers and writers and artists and musicians looking at work in a different genre and 
reinventing it in their own genre and making it their own. So there's um, there's a really again a film that people can check out after the video is um, is on Vimeo, um, and it's by a guy called Vugar Effendi. And it would be helpful now if I could remember the title of the film, but I can't. I think if you search his name, Vugar Effendi, uh -huh. it's it's um, man, it's gone. But um, in this film, what he does is he he takes great paintings. And he puts them side by side from scenes in movies that they've inspired. So you can see how, how great directors have deliberately lifted um, an aesthetic or a, a sort of mise-en-scene from a painting and included it in their own movies. So it, it is all right to steal, but, um, but just make sure you do it in the, in, the, in, in the right way. There's a nice clip of Steve Jobs talking about this, um, and he talks about um, uh, how at Apple they were shameless about stealing what he said but but he qualifies that and said they stole from computer science and zoology and poetry and all these different things some people might argue that they they stole some ideas from within computer science as well but uh, you know i'll leave <laughs> all of the kettle of fish. i'm not sure what the legal sort of rules are on instagram live so uh, yeah, <laughs> step away from that so i, I think those, those those that would be my third tip yeah um, that's fantastic. And and is that? Can you give us an example of something that you maybe have stolen recently in the name of a good idea? <laughs> um, good question. Yeah. Um, uh, so, one of the projects that I've done that I'm most proud of was mm -hmm. um, was an ident for Studio Canal. So when you see a Studio Canal movie, there is a there is a sort of animation that, um, uh, at the beginning of every movie, and I, I I did this in collaboration with um, the design studio DBLG. Mm -hmm. And a major artwork that inspired our approach was um, was one by Cornelia Parker, the British artist. And what she'd done was uh, she had a work called Cold Dark Matter, which was a garden shed that had been exploded. And then sort of all the bits of shrapnel and pieces were hung in the gallery space and there was a big light bulb in the middle. And what we ended up doing for the IDEN was to to hang an installation of glass panels a bit like Cornelia Parker had hung her shed and to shine light through them. And the, the idea was that you create this sort of timeless cinema ident and cinema is all about light passing through, through lenses. And that, so, but it was, it was quite, um, it was, that, that artwork was, it was a major sort of stepping off point for us to, to get to our idea. And while the two look quite different, I think you can see the, the parallels between them. And that's on my, that's on my website, which is uh, Richard Holman. Dot com. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes, everyone should definitely check it out. Lots of interesting resources on there. Um, well, thank you so much. That was super, super interesting and some some really great tips, which I will be stealing in a in an ethical way uh, for my own creative work. You're, um, you're, you're very welcome. So, yeah, thank you so much. Um, and yes, this was the first of our of our skills share sessions. We've got another one today at 3 p.m. with illustrator Luciano. So please do join us uh, online then. And yeah, thank you, Richard. And thank you for everyone who joined. And this will be on the website later today as well for anyone who's missed it. So yeah, thank Great. you. Great. Thanks, Amelia. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care.